Yes, family, blessed love. We give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life, Emperor Haile Selassie I. Give thanks for your presence with us. You're definitely here in the tiger's nest. Of course, you know, wherever we are, it is the tiger's nest, the Honorable Priest Isaac here with you. And of course, we are very thankful for your presence. And as we mentioned, the tiger's nest, be sure to join us this evening for the Radio Anu's version of the Tiger's Nest, which is every Monday to Thursday at 7 p.m. sharp Eastern Caribbean time. Well, Eastern Standard Time may be about 6 p.m. now, but Eastern Caribbean time for sure, 7 p.m. sharp. Just check wherever you are on the globe as it relates to that so you could align yourself. Family, give thanks. We're going to go into a nice meditation right about now talking about the libation i just want to remind you of the 2nd of january that is uh, this sunday the 2nd of january of course we'll be celebrating our solar return our earth light as such what people call birthday so we'll be having a very special day on radio anu so all roads are gonna lead to radio anu from 6 p.m 6 a.m in the uprising well even way before 6 a.m eh? I'm talking about from the, 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 the wee hours of midnight, Naya Bingy music going all the way down until 6 a.m. And then we go straight into the program known as Kidemi. It's going to be a special edition of Kidemi. And that day, you know, on radio and what we'll be doing, we'll be having special interviews throughout, throughout the day. Some ancient interviews that we, 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 we held before, specifically with members of the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress. So we're going to bring up the, the interview with Sister Lily Mae Duncanson, the interview with um, Honorable Priest Kumi, Priest Chris, Honorable Kes Westmore, Priest Ritman. We'll have an a interview, interview, sit down with the Honorable Priest Shimran. That's going to be a blessed day in a man. That is the 2nd of January as I celebrate my Earth light. You know, for the whole day, just join me on radio. I know and it's going to be a special day because we're going to be having a lot of giveaways. We're just going to be giving things away. You know, our documentaries, our books, we'll be giving away um, um, subscriptions to the, the Tiger's Nest radio program. But you just, you just got to be there. Once you're there, you will know what to do and we'll give you all the instructions and you will know what to do. No games, you ain't got to write nothing. Just be there. And for sure, just giveaways throughout the day. And let me just remind you eh, that we have a special as it relates to the international homeschool now. Remember, as we said before, until the very same 2nd of January, once you order the international homeschool program, you will definitely get a free Tiger's Nest t-shirt. That's almost over. Eh? That, that, um, that special is almost coming to a conclusion. And remember the Tiger's Nest shirts, you could get them in different colors and you could get them with or without the stripes. So definitely that is something that you should look into. So looking forward to seeing you again, that Sunday the second, that is gonna be a marvelous day. We're gonna be celebrating throughout the day and um, it's just gonna be a wonderful joy for each and everyone who will be coming through. Now, what I want to speak of, as I promised previously, the whole aspect of the libation, truth libation, really. Now, what, what, what is the libation process all about? And why is it that I am bringing it up at a time like now? Now, of course, you know, we're in the season of what is referred to as Kwanzaa. And um, I had a previous, the previous video that we put up, which was we were broadcasting live as such, streaming live. We were talking about the whole science of Rastafari and Kwanzaa. So I'm not going to go too deep into that again. You could just watch it, and I'm sure many of you were there. And in fact, before I go any further, um, this is another thing that I have to offer. There was an episode that we did on the Tiger's Nest uh, entitled Kwanzaa. But for, for reasons beyond our control, it, it, we couldn't broadcast it live. So all those who are subscribers of the Tiger's Nest, you would have received that 
uh, that audio. So almost two hours long entitled the Kwanzaa. That was for Monday evening. So I'm just saying anyone that would desire to get a copy of that program that we did, that's the title of it, Kwanzaa. Anyone who desired to get a copy of that, that's Monday Night's Tiger's Nest, just email us and we would just send you a copy. There's nothing attached to that. Eh? We just send you a copy of it. Whoever you are, you don't have to be a member of nothing. We just send you a copy of it. But anyway, one of the things that stand out outside of, of course, the principles, you know, the principles of Kwanzaa and the unity and purpose and faith, we've been through these things. But the libation now, you know, some ones that consider themselves very spiritual will burn a fire on libation. And you may ask, so why, why would you do that? Because they're saying, well, you know, libation is, you know what I mean? It's, it's not in the Bible. I've heard these things with my ears. Eh? It's not in the Bible. It's not Rastafari and so on and so on. All right. Anyway, as I said, we already kind of touched the importance of being able to balance things off. So what is libation all, uh, all about? Of course, the use of the water shows a very uh, spiritual aspect of it as the nature of water is the spirit too. Water carries a high spirit. Water, the Mivriam, the, the Mary, the Maya, you know, water going back to the earth, touching the earth, going into the earth is a high science. So what ones we do, ones we take the pure water and bless the water and pray over the water. And specifically, when they throw the water to the earth, they, they call names of, of ancestors, they call the name of the living and they call the name of the dead and, and somehow connect themselves to it and or to them and, and you know recreate a different energy and a force, different force around them. Libation, it's, it's somewhat of remembering, connecting with, you know, and expressing, you know, the love that you would have for even those who have gone before you. So usually when people make a libation, they usually call out their grandparents and um, especially in groups of conscious ones, you would hear one say Dr. Martin Luther King, and Malcolm X. These are usually the names that you might hear come up, you know, and Harriet Tubman and X, Y, Z. And they remember them. Obviously, there would be many others that we don't even know about that you would never find in the history books, whether it be propaganda or the truth. You'd never know about them. So at the same time, you have to keep them in mind as well as you, you penetrate and connect. And as I said earlier in another program, even though we speak of ancestors, I was speaking of Maya Angelou, you know, the, the whole science of the ancestors. We are our ancestors. I mean, those who you have said have gone before you, they have returned in the cycle of life. And reincarnation, as King Emmanuel teaches, us, bring everyone back again in flesh, you know. So it's, it's, it's a deep thing, really, when you look into it. But the libation science now, what I want to show you is that even in the Bible, it is seen. Now, to me, the real libation is really this. What I've, I, I found interesting is that documentary, the same documentary you would hear when you get the, 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 um, the episode, the Kwanzaa episode that we did on the tiger's nest. As I said, it's free, you know, we just give that to you when you contact us. They were saying that you utilize a cup similar to this because it's nature. If it's one thing, the Kwanzaa tries best to deal with nature. That's why I always advise that one should be careful with them candles that one's burning, them pig fat candles straight up, you know, straight, straight, straight up. Because I know we just kind of run to the store and buy something and light it up when it's a spiritual thing. But anyway, so a natural cup, calabash, you know, them kind of things. And what the, the brother was saying on the documentary for those who will hear it and those who heard it, he's saying that the same cup that they drink of, out of, the sacred water, is the same cup that they use to pour the libation. Now, if you notice, you know, a lot of us, not that I'm not going to try to say that we are not too first in how it's really done. But if you notice, a lot of ones, when they do the libation vibration, 
Sometimes they use a, a bottle of water. Sometimes maybe it's just convenience and, and maybe what they want is not available. But sometimes they would use a bottle of water or again, um, they may use a, a cup or even a calabash. But the science of it being the same utensil or the same container that you drink from, being the same container that you pour the libation with, that's a very serious, serious vibes to me. That's a very serious meditation, especially when it goes with the story that I'm going to highlight. Now, I want to read something here from the Bible. Eh? We're looking in the book of 2 Samuel. And this is 2 Samuel um, chapter 23. Now, I'm going to read everything. I'm going to start from verse 15. And I will explain as I go. And it says here, And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. Now, of course, I mean, this is a perfect example of a, of a, of a, of a story, a massive story being put into just one sentence or one paragraph. Now, first of all, who are these three mighty men? Now, this, this specific chapter, goes into the mighty men of David. Okay, let me just pick a, a verse out of the blue. Verse 8. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. The Tashmoite that sat in the sea, chief among the captains. The same was Adino, the Esnite. He lift up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. So this Idino. Kill 800 people one time. And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, the Ohoite, um, one of the three mighty men with David. When he, defiled, uh, when he defiled the Philistines that were there gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away, he rose up and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary. And his hand clave unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day. And the people returned after him uh, only to spoil. So he killed off everybody, basically. And after him was Shama, Shama, the son of Agi, the Hara. I, hmm, he saw like he from Hara. Mm -hmm. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop uh, where was a piece of ground full of lentils, good food. And the people fled from the Philistines but he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew and slew the Philistine and the Lord wrought a great victory and three of the 30 chief went down and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave of Adulam and the troops of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim and David was then in a hole and the garrison of the Philistine was then in Bethlehem and David longed and said, Oh, that I would give, oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. So what this is saying now, as I said, the chapter is really going into the mighty men of valor that used to move with David. It's more than three of them. It's 30 something of them flexing with David. And then they talk about the three great ones. And then another three. And another three. One man, they say, beat off Goliath, brother. One man say, um, they say, kill how much beers and this and that in the snow. All right. So what is happening here is that we have a situation where you see the Philistines. The Philistines have Bethlehem on the siege. This is what's happening here. That's what verse 14 says. And David was in a hole and the garrison of the Philistine was then in Bethlehem. So that means David and his troops and his mighty ones had fled or fled from Bethlehem and they were then in a hole. Let's put it that way. 
you know, so they were, they were away. In fact, he was in higher grounds, really, um, um, above Bethlehem. But listen to the story now, the man. David there lamented, saying to himself, if I could only get some of the water from the well of Bethlehem. Now, this well of Bethlehem is a very symbolic well, you know. It's deep, the water from the well and all of that. Remember when Christ met the woman by the well? It is supposed to be the same well there. It, 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 the science of the well and Jacob's well and all of that, the well is very important. You know, even in other stories outside of the Bible, you, 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 you see the woman by the well. And that is why, for example, when Jacob, when Jacob um, got his wives, because he was sent, he was sent into the old country to receive his wife. In fact, before him, his father Isaac, remember Abraham had Isaac and Isaac had Jacob. And then Abraham sent Isaac's, or uh, his servant, into the old country to get Isaac's wife. And the servant said to the Lord, because the servant had camels and sheep and so on, said, listen, if a woman, the woman that will come and get water for me and then give water to my animals, let that be the wife of my master. Read the story in the Bible. It shows you that. And then when Isaac's wife came along, I think that was uh, Rebecca, when she came along and she saw the servant of Abraham there, who she didn't really know who it was, and she saw his animals, she went to the well and she brought water for him and water for the animals. And that's how he know that was Isaac's wife. When Isaac had his children, Jacob and Esau, when Jacob went looking for his wife, what happened? He came to the same well. And this time, there was a stone in front of the well. And only the shepherds could move the stone and the sisters them could not get no water from the well. And Jacob came and he moved the well and he got water for the sisters and those were his, his wife that eventually would be Leah and um, Rachel. Even Moses, when Moses went into Media and the shepherds were harassing the daughters of Jethro and they couldn't get water neither. It was seven of them. Moses went and took water from the well and gave it to them. And one of them eventually became his wife. So you see that story. That is how I know when Christ met the woman at the well, it's more than how the preacher man teach that story there. Because she was a woman of Sa Maria, Sa and Maria. Sa and Maria both represent water in different ancient sin. Maria for sure is Mary, Maria, Maria, you know, the Maya is waters and she met him by the well. So all of that is symbolic. If you notice, all of these saviors meet their wives by the well. You understand? So the well is very symbolic. The well is symbolic of salvation. Remember, even Christ, Christ's bride is seen as the church you know, which is the body of Christ. It's a very deep thing. So it's the same thing now, even when you look at scriptures like this. So when David is saying he's longing for the water, okay, yes, he's thirsty. He wants a drink. And he know that the water from the well of Bethlehem tastes nice. But it's more than that. You got to remember, David is a Messiah type figure. So when you look at this in his metaphysical sense, you have to see David as a God figure. And the water in the well of Bethlehem is very symbolic of the church. You understand? It's very symbolic of salvation. You understand? Okay, Isaac, Isa, Isaac as a God figure, you know, he, his water, his wife came throughout the whole going into the well and dipping out the water. Jacob, Jacob, another God figure in the type. Yes, his wives, same way, going to the well and dipping out the water. Moses, another God figure, nobody can deny this. His wife going to the water and dipping out, going to the well and dipping out the water. Again, Christ meeting the Samarian woman, Samaria. Remember, Samaria is one of God's wife in, in Isaiah. God said his wives are Samaria and Jerusalem. Those are his wives. So Christ being God in flesh met Samaria by the well again. So if you read it esoterically, you can see it's the same thing playing over and over and over again. So now David, as the God figure and the Christ figure, 
says that he is longing for the water from the well. And what happens? Three of his mighty soldiers stand up. Remember, now keep this in mind. Eh? Remember, Bethlehem is under siege. Right. So the Philistines have Bethlehem under control, have it locked down. That means, so, so, so what happened now? That's why David is in the hole. That's why he left there with, I think, about 600 men, foot soldiers, and of course, women and children and animals and, 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 and sheep and goat and whatever. And he has left the compound because the Philistines have invaded. You know, so this is just one of them moments when David had to go through his tribulation. There was a time when he was running from Saul. There was a time when he was running from Absalom. There was a time when he had to dash from somebody else. And this is the time that he had to leave the holy city, you know, because the Philistines came in and had it under control. So David is a man that has gone through his share of tribul tribulation, specifically as the king of Israel, as the individual that wears the crown. So this is just one of the time he's going to eventually get back to the city. But for now, he is in exile and he is longing for the water from Bethlehem. And all David do is say that. And three of his mighty men say, yeah, the boss wants some water. Now, although this is just seen in one chapter, you know, you got to put life to this. The fact that David is not in the city means that the city well Locked down. The Philistines have the place under control. They have Israelites still in the city that hoping for the day that David will return. Just like when the Ethiopians were fighting war, looking for the king to return, man, looking for David to return. Because the Philistines, they come down on us and they, the yoke is very heavy. And David and his, 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 his soldiers and some ones of the tribes are in the hills. And David just say he wants a water. And three man, you know, three, one, two, three, get up and go to the well and bring out the water. Now, I could imagine, remember for them to get to the well, you know, they have to get through the security and the defense. For them to get the water, I could imagine that the well is highly guarded. For them to get the water from that historic sacred well and then come out of the city that means they have to come back through the same security and the same defense that was there now the bible don't give no detail he didn't say if they had to sneak in and nobody detected them or they had to fight their way in because keep in mind you know, this chapter is describing men of valor, men that thump down moose and, and lift up um, um, body slam gorillas. That's how the scripture make them sound. So the impression I am getting is that it is showing you how tough these brothers are. So I would imagine that they fought their way through the garrison, through the siege, through the walls of defense that the, the, the Philistines had set up and they got to the water because their king wanted the water and they dipped out the water. I could imagine they say, hurry up, Russ, we have to go. You get it? Yeah, let's go. They're coming again, spears and arrows and they're ducking and they're fighting and they're bossing man face and they're bam, 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 three of them. Three of them, which is very symbolic because David is the God figure and he sent three of them. Three of them come in David's name. Follow me good. Three of them come, break through the enemy's wall. That's what Marcus Garvey and King Emmanuel and Haile Selassie do now. They break through the enemy's wall to come to the well to dip up the salvation. The water is symbolic of salvation. Water is pure. The, the, the pure water you know, is not alkaline water. You know. Pure water is neutral water where the pH is seven. Seven, you understand the number of God. So they're coming for that pure water, which again represents salvation, which again represents the remnant. The same 144,000 elect. That's why he sent the tree for the 144,000 elect. You understand? That's why I showed you already all the, the Christ type figures got their wives 
at the well. And again, that is why I showed you that the wife of Christ is the bride of Christ. It is not necessarily a woman as such. Of course, there got to be a woman that represents that. But it is the church. So that's why the hymn say, the church is one foundation. Tis me, thus Christ, our Lord. She is his new creation. From the water and the word, from Zion to earth, he sought her to be his only bride. And with his love, he, he bought her, I think it is. And for um, her life, he lived. Can you imagine that? So the church is a her. The church is a woman. The church is a she. But the church is the body of Christ. Is the people come together to make the Christ. It's high science. So that is why one more time that all the Christ figures, types of Christ, even if you don't believe they're Christ, but you should at least accept that they're symbolic of the Christ to come. Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and others would have met their wives at the sacred well. The Christ himself met the woman from Samaria, a city that God himself described as his wife. Please follow me good at the well. It's enough, enough deep science going on here. So I'm showing you know after all of that, after the three mighty warriors broke through the garrison and dipped the water out and they broke back through, bam, 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 bam. I could imagine how much man they slew just to do that. Keeping in mind, you know, the whole of David crew outside because they were, they were in exile from these same people that the three broke through. Even the three was with them. But because of the task that was at hand and what David demanded, it was nothing for them to charge up themselves and just bust through the garrison to save the water, to bring the water to David. And when David got the water, hear what the Bible said David did. David said that these brothers here had put their life on the line. David says, and he said, be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is it not this, the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, I would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. So David didn't drink it. David took the water and poured it to the earth. What's the subject we're talking about? Um, David's men of valor. We're talking about libation. What is libation? What, well, how is libation done? Well, they take the water and you throw it to the earth. Okay. For what reason? There got to be a reason for that. What's the meaning of that? That's good water. Somebody could have drink that. You. You're going to throw it to the earth. You water in a plant? Oh, you no. The water that goes to the earth. That's why you bless the water. You say a prayer and you call names and then you throw the water to the earth. David says that these brothers put their life on the line. Here, what he referred to the water as no. He said, This is the blood of the brethren. The blood he called the water. You know, he referred to the water as the blood. Listen, anyone out there that is a real chalice smoker, right, from the heart, you know that there are times when there's one cup of water left. You know what I mean? Maybe you're going downtown to buy the next bottle of water. I don't know. But at the moment, you're ready. You want to drink of water and you want to burn your chalice. And this is for real chalice people. Because somebody else would have wrapped a spliff and drink the water. But the real chalice man would know exactly what I'm talking about. And woman. Because the water belongs to God. The, what, the herb and so is God's food, you know. The herb is God's food. It's not you, you know. The herb belongs to God. That's why the herb go to the meditation, the Godhead. That's where the, the God is, the mind. So the water now 
So you have a choice to either drink the water for your belly or put the water in the chalice. And I know many people, because you're not into it, going to say, who, trust you crazy. I gonna drink the water, brother. You talk, no, I don't tell you to go kill yourself. And, and that's the last bottle of water you have, or whatever, or whatever, whatever. But I'm showing you what David just did. David had that choice. In fact, as David just said, these brothers put their life on the line to bring that water for him. And he just showed that way. I could imagine they say, hey, hey, but wait. What's wrong with the boss? Boss, you see this cut? Now, that shows that it was a battle. Because he clearly showed this is the blood of the man. That is why you revere the Messiah that come to save you. you know? That's why we talk about the Messiah pay the ultimate sacrifice on these different things. And Christ paid the ultimate sacrifice on these different things. Because it's the same thing. The three leave the heavenly scope and come and break through. They didn't just come for the water. They had to fight their way through the enemy. Just like how King Emmanuel have to fight his way through the enemy. Haile Selassie, tell me you see that clearly have to fight his way through the enemy just to get to us. Marcus Yavi had to fight his way through the enemy just to touch us and say, hey, I am here, I come to rescue you. That is what them three mighty men that David said, who is the Godhead, the three of them, the prophet, priest, and king, come down to the well of Bethlehem to dip up that salvation for us. For us. So that is why now when we partake of the chalice, this alone is a subject by itself, but it is well recorded. The Holy Grail, the Holy Grail. We have done how many subjects on the Holy Grail? I'm telling you, fi fi family, when you observe and gather the understanding that we put with the Holy uh, Grail, this is not the time to go to the depths of it, but when you understand the sacrifice, the tree of life, not only the tree of life, let's keep in mind what David said, the blood, what? The blood, the blood of these brethren that went in jeopardy of their lives. That is what is in the libation cup. Keep in mind again, you know, this is a next lesson to some degree that the water inside of the cup of the chalice is the blood of the plant. Remember the plant is the tree of life that represents the Messiah. So the chlorophyll, that is why we've shown several times that the chlorophyll and the, 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 the makeup of the blood, the blood, the molecular structure thereof the both of them are basically the same with you know the slight difference with the magnesium and, and the iron. And that's all. That's all. You look at them, it's the same thing. So this is why we can, you know, uh, uh, if you want to say, compare the tree of life, which is the marijuana, the tree of life, that tree represents the Christ figure, the tree of life, the Christ being, the green God. You understand, same salvation order we, we, we're speaking of here. So when we partake of the chalice, this is done in remembrance of the God. At the last supper, as it is called, you had the two elements there, which is the bread and you had the wine. The bread and the wine specifically represents the natures of the Christ or the nature of the Christ. And again, now, this is why he said at that last supper, anytime you do this, whenever you do it, do it in remembrance of me. So it is something to be done with meditation, with concentration, with, 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 with vibration towards the sacrifice. That is why when you partake, you say a prayer. You bless it before you take the drug. That is why it's a, a meditation moment. And after you are completed, when you're done burn the pipe, what do you do? You know, just put it in the corner. We are taught that we pour out the water 
with prayers. What is it? We pour out this water here. After we done partake of it, eh? we pour out the water to the earth. You don't throw it in the kitchen sink or the bathroom sink, not down the shower drain. You definitely don't throw it in the toilet. At least throw it in a flowering pot. Make the water. Remember, the water is now green eh? with the, the, the plant. It's the blood of the plant and it's connected to you too. You have made a connection with the elements here. You have become one with all of this. Eh? Remember the chalice is the trinity to it. Eh? The prophet, the priest, and the king. The chalice is in three parts. You break it up, it's three parts. The tall structure, the priestly structure, the short structure, which is the king, and the round structure, which is the prophet. The chalice and the three of them work together. You put them together and they work. So all of that is in the whole cosmic here. So when you are done, the ritual continues when you take the water. Remember, the water is well charged, you know. Got to keep this in mind. It wasn't fun you were having. It wasn't recreation. It was recreation. So when you partake, you pass the cup around. Next man, pass the cup around. And, and oh, it's a one pipe or human family, loved ones, husband, wife, whatever it is, when you're done. You take the same water and you find the earth and you pour the water out. Holy Manuelai, Selassie, Ja, Rastafara. You're doing the same thing David did. David is acknowledging that this water belongs to God. This is what I'm saying. One bottle of water left. Either you drink it or you give it to God. This is giving God the water. As I said, the next man might wrap a spliff and drink the water. But the spliff, that ain't how God wants it. God explained that clearly. I'm talking about the Almighty Eye. That is the chalice that come to him. Eh? The tree of life, the marijuana. Well researched, eh? no guessing or just talking off the top of our heads. In fact, we have already put this in order and explained this in documentation clearly. So, so when you understand this, for sure, the gravity is very important. Eh? Very, very important. When we study the science of what we are speaking of here, my family, it is all connected to nature. Sometimes some of these subject areas, unless you are part of it, it may not hit you right away. But partaking of the chalice is very important. If you could believe that putting water, you go to the store and you buy a little bottle of water and you throw it in a cup, and throw it in the plant and call Martin Luther King's name and say, Ashe, if you feel that is powerful. Well, I mean, when you get the most powerful plant in the earth that everybody is kicking and running around about, the meditation plant, the medical plant, the potent plant, the THC plant, the DMT plant, the open portals plant, the cannabis sativa, and you put it in the clay. This is made from clay, which by itself is uh, an element of mystics by itself, clay, the coconut shell, pure water, the bamboo. You light that with fire. We don't even put the gas on it. And then you go into a proper meditation. You think good thoughts, good vibration. You pray again. Remember the Japanese man book when he prayed around the water, the dirty water, how it currents clean. Water has memory. Water is life. So you pray the water vibrates. Nothing's happening here when you burn the chalice in. And then when you are done, you take that green water and pour it to the earth and call the name of the father. Well, if you have power with the bottle water that you pour to the earth and say, Ashe, this must have at least 500 times more power than that. So when we done partake, so that's it, chalice smoke is not just chalice smoking. And it's not smoke, it's clouds. It's a ritual. So it begins before you start. That's why you clean the herb with your hands. It's like making love to it. It's a process. And then when you go through the process and you're done, you bring it back to the earth, the ashes. You blow the ashes out into the wind and they return to the elements. You don't even know where they go. Even the smoke that come out your nostrils with all your thoughts. Yeah, that's what happens. Eh? It collects penile and hypothalamus and, and pituitary glands, the three main glands, another godhead here. When this, the so-called smoke, even if it's a spliff you're smoking, 
pass through because remember the smoke is very electromagnetic too and it comes out and it goes away believe me you 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 don't even know the, the the energies that you have sent out into the atmosphere when you do these things it's a powerful realms that we dwell in it so yes family just showing to you that the the truth basian or libation as they call it uh method is very deep and uh, i honestly think that is why i how could i have anything against that when i to me this is the real libation here yeah? And that is why David could not drink the water. And keep in mind, as I was showing you from the Kwanzaa celebration, I found it interesting that they say that the cup you drink from is the cup you use to libate. The cup you drink from <laughs> is the same cup you use to do the libation. Hey, family, give thanks, eh? Just reminding you to join me this evening on the Tiger's Nest. It doesn't know how it goes. 7 p.m. Eastern Caribbean time. Of course, that would be uh, really 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, and um, the, the time in uh, uh, anywhere else, you got to check that for yourself. Family. I'm very thankful for all the love, all the strength. Remember, we're talking about the second day of January, uh, full Earth Day celebration. I'm talking about a special presentation of Kidemi. That's going to be the interview day. You know, we're going to be replaying some of our ancient interviews with some of, again, the members of the Congress. Plus, we have a few new interviews lined up. So it's just going to be a wonderful day throughout the day. Remember, we have a lot of giveaways that day, uh, but you've got to be there. You know, don't worry. You don't have to write no essay and, you know, guess the number of the jelly beans in the jar. We don't have no time for none of that. Just be present and we'll make sure we we share them, you know, share the love with each and everyone. So anyway, give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life. And of course, I will see you on Radio and Holy Emmanuel I, Celestia, Ja, Rastafari,